Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Tonight I'm going to go after my first Nebula target with the Edge HD. So like I said, tonight I'm going after my first Nebula target with the Celestron Edge 8-inch HD telescope. And I got this telescope quite a while ago and I have shot a few targets, but when I first picked it up, it was galaxy season. I shot a couple of galaxy images with it. But since then, I've kind of put this scope away because I've been using other telescopes. I've been reviewing a couple of scopes as well. Um, but I'm really excited now to, to get this uh, scope back out, dust it off and capture my first Nebula target. Now, I actually started this image back in May and I had the telescope set up at the bottom of the garden before I put my observatory in and I captured a couple of hours on the um, HA and the, sorry, the S2 and the O3 filters. So I do have a little bit of data um, that I can put towards this image. But unfortunately, since then I've taken the camera off, I, um, I've moved the camera around, it's been sat in the uh, garage for a few months and I didn't take any flat frames. So I'm kind of coming back out to this, this image, seeing whether or not I can just capture the HA tonight and then put it all together to pull together a final image. I don't think it's gonna be the best image ever because I think it's only gonna be about four or five hours max and there's no um, flat frames with this image either. So fingers crossed I can pull something together. So the target I'm gonna be capturing tonight is the Pelican Nebula. And I have imaged this before, but that was a wide field image using my FRA 400 refractor. So that had the North American Nebula in, the Cygnus Wall and the Pelican Nebula. So I'm really excited to see what I can get with the Edge. Now one of the main benefits for a scope like this is having that extra focal length, that extra reach. With 1400 millimeters of focal length you can really zoom in on the targets, really crop in on those nebulas and pick out different details that you just can't get with the wide field refractors. So I'm really excited to, uh, to actually see how this image turns out and to compare it to to that wide field image now the the pelican nebula is up all night in the constellation cygnus so it should be quite a nice time to image but I do have a 95% moon, which is also up all night. So um, I'm not entirely sure that I'm gonna get the best data ever. Um, it should stay clear all night, but um, we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, I need to now set up the rest of the rig, um, put all the wires together, connect it up to the mount, and then just wait for it to get dark enough to polar align. <laughs> Okay, so I am all polar aligned and I'm just about to slew to my target and then I can go inside, put my feet up and wait for it to get dark enough to actually image. So fingers crossed it stays, stays clear and hopefully I can pull together something from this uh, bit of a mismatch image, bit of a mismatch video. But hopefully I've got something to show you um, in a few days time. Okay, so as expected, I don't have a huge amount of data for this target, um, but the HA I managed to capture the other night, I'm really pleased with. Um, so the stars look nice and round, um, so I think my collimation was pretty good. Um, there's quite a lot of detail in the Pelican Nebula, as you would expect with HA, um, but also there's not a huge amount of noise in this stack, considering this is just under two hours worth of five minute subs. So this is just, like I said, light frames and darks uh, calibrated no flats. 
The data I captured back in May, I am not happy with at all. Um, so this is the sulfur and this is the oxygen. Um, I think the collimation was off on uh, on the oxygen and potentially the, the sulfur subs as well. Um, so that uh, doesn't help things to start with. But also you can see there's some strange banding going on on in some of these images. So I think it's going to be really quite hard to edit this data. Now, the only thing I can think that might have caused that is the fact that the dark frames I used to calibrate with this, with the lights are from quite recent. So I don't think they've perfectly calibrated out. As you can see here, there might be just a little bit of, um, of amp glow creeping in there or it might have over corrected. Um, so yeah, I just think that this again highlights the importance um, of taking good calibration frames, um, keeping that dark library up to date and trying to take flats or making sure you take flats. But I am going to try and edit it. I don't know how good it will come out, um, but there are other targets that I do want to image at the moment. So um, hopefully I can pull something together and show you this at the end of the video. Thank you.